Hello and welcome to this playoff edition of Mark's Madness, joined as always by Mark Miller. I'm Matt Finkel. Mark, we know where everybody is. The brackets are out. We had our playoff show on Sunday, our sports report special, which you can see online. Mark was kind enough to join the panel and, and break it all down. And, and let's just continue doing that yep. a little more okay. in depth now and begin Sounds in good. Division Two with Lima Senior. So Lima Senior, number five in Region Six, coming off a loss to Toledo Central Catholic in which they blew a big lead. A little bit reminiscent of last year's playoff game. That's right, against Harrison. Uh, you know, the first time in a long time they were in the playoffs and they get out to that big lead. I remember I was over at Northern doing a game and we were getting the scores and we were feeling really good about it. And then afterwards we found out how it finished out. And that was a heartbreaker. This was a heartbreaker because a track championship went with it. And those thoughts come back into your head about being ahead in a big game. And then I'm sure some of the guys that played against Harrison last year had a little flashback. So they've got to get that out of their heads as they go into this year's playoff game. They'll be traveling to Miamisburg in week 11. And I think the good point that you guys made on Sunday is that the difference between this year and last year is they don't have to wait a whole season to get back on the field. They can rebound from this That's tough right. loss right away. That's right. Anytime something really goes bad in sports, you want to play right away. And, you know, that's the advantages of, of Major League Baseball over, over, over the NFL. In NFL, you have to wait a whole week. Major League Baseball, you're probably going to play the next day or at least two days from now. So you want to get out there. You want to do it again. But, but certainly their confidence was shaken up there. You know, they've got a week to get it back, and I'm sure Coach Fell is working on them. He's telling them, it's, you know, it, this is a big chance for us. It's the second season. That's over. That's done. You know, we, we've learned from it. And I think they probably have learned from it. The key will be Miamisburg. If they get up to a big lead, what's going to start filtering into their heads? You know, they can score. They score lots of points, had 540-some yards. they got to get yards and points when they need them, not just to build on a lead that they've had. That's nice. You know, we'll take the big lead. But on that third down, you got to convert. On that first and goal, you got to get in the end zone. That's the next step they need to take. All right, they blew a 27-point lead this week. And Jaden Walker, four touchdowns, mm -hmm. as you said, 548 total yards of offense. They can score. Yeah. But it's, and when the pressure's on, they'll need to deliver. So they got the road game and we'll see it's how. It's good to be on the road, I think. Yeah. First it, time out. Yeah. A little bit of a challenge and maybe mm -hmm. refocuses them a yeah. bit yeah. Uh, heading into the, to the second season. Yeah. Let's go to Division Three now. And that's where we find 10-0 Wapakoneta. They're the one seed in Region 10 and Salina, seven and three. They're the sixth seed in this region. So Wapak has completed back-to-back -back perfect regular seasons now. Yeah. This looks like it's their region to lose. Yeah, I would, I would agree with that. You know, they had a good run last year, lost in four overtimes to finally get out of the tournament to Trotwood Madison. And, uh, you know, they've got Belmont. Belmont has good history down there. It's a city school in Dayton. Uh, but they're, tr they're coming up and playing on Wapak's turf, literally, yes. field turf. And uh, that'll, be a, that'll be a tough game for Belmont, I think. And, but, the, you know, the Redskins were pushed to the limit last Friday was against Van say. Wert. You, yeah. know, you know, if, if we're going to give almost out of boys, Van Wert gets one. What a great year they had. Keith Records got that thing turned. I know it wasn't the wins that they wanted. They lost so many close games. But they know they can play with anybody. They are a two-point conversion, absolutely the right call to try to get that victory and not a tie, and it just didn't happen for them. All five losses by a touchdown or less Amazing. for that team. A senior leading group, you feel for them a little, but they fought right up until the end, gave Wapak everything they could handle. Yep. And now Wapak may be a little wake-up call yep. heading into their matchup. And Salina, you know, they, they've got the Trotwood Madison, you know, who's in it every year. So that, that'll be a tough one for them, but one thing about it, they're in the tournament. You know, everybody's going to lose except for seven teams in the, at the very end. So maybe Trotwood's going to lose in the first round this year. Salina, first time in the postseason since the late 90s. So a lot of excitement around the community there. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That, you know, in, in the 90s, Mike Bath and the rest of those guys, they, that was kind of standard operating procedure for those guys. You know, they yeah. they battle for the WBL and getting the playoffs hadn't happened for a while so this is special this will be fun for them. they've got a three-year starter at quarterback so they've got some mm -hmm. experience we'll see how they fare against what we know is a talented Trotwood team yep division four it's our third Western Buckeye League team it's OG seven and three they're the five seed in region 12 mm -hmm. now the Titans beat St. Mary's 14 to 7 in what was essentially a playoff game yes, it was round so one Ken yep. Schreiner's team they're already in the postseason mindset mm -hmm. and they'll be on the road but you got to like their chances against Indian Lake. Well, you do because of who they've played all year long. They, they've battled against the WBL. They, that was a tough game for them to beat St. Mary's there last Friday. 
Uh, and I'm not saying Indian Lake's not good, but I don't think they've played the level of competition weeks one through ten that OG has to get them ready. And OG's used to going to the playoffs. You know, just one hiccup last year and they didn't go, but uh, they're in almost every year, and and uh, they'll be they'll be they'll be ready. Ken Schreiner gets them ready. Interesting that they had a better record last year, eight yeah. and two, and didn't yeah. make it. This year, seven and three. They're in the playoffs. It could be so fickle like that. You just got to yeah. get your chance. When you get your chance, you got to make the most That's of it. That's right. And you know, health is a big part of it this time of year too. Bath in this region as well in Region 12, just missing out on level three divisor points. Port Clinton taking that eighth and final spot. Bath, a big win over Elida to mm -hmm. even make it to this point and get to that eighth spot, yeah. but then they still fall a little short. What a season for Bath. Yeah, you know, probably more than any other team uh, that I can think of, they improved from week one to week 10. They got better and better and better, the win streak to finish out the year. And th I, there's a lot of playoff teams that were hoping Bath didn't get in because they were going to be a very difficult out. They play great run defense. They've got a good mix with Gross and Sullivan running the football. They can throw it if they have to. They were on a real roll, and for them not to get in the playoffs helps those guys that we're going to have to play them. I bet you're right. They're looking yeah. up. We don't want to have to mm -hmm. face that team even as an eight yeah. seed because the way it works in the postseason, sometimes your eight seeds, you know, they may not, you mentioned it on Sunday, they may not deserve to be eight seeds, yeah. maybe higher, but the points yeah. and who you play and where you get your wins and mm -hmm. it all, mathematics, a lot, a lot goes into That's it. That's right. So. Bill Garland, great job with that team. Great job. And, and they really thought next year is going to be their best year. So heads up, WBL. Yes, like we could see them really make some noise next year. They already made some noise this year and looking forward to next season already for the Wildcats. In Division 5, Coldwater completes the perfect regular season, 10-0. Mm -hmm. They get the three seed. Now, I was wondering why they wouldn't be the one seed, but I guess it's because they play smaller schools in the MAC for their – they're one of the bigger yeah. schools in their conference. Is that the reason you think? I, I think that's part of yeah. it. Th that – formula is so complicated I just wait till the Saturday <laughs> or Sunday afterwards and see who's in the playoffs right. I don't do a lot of the figuring but I'm not a coach either I know they do that but Bethel they don't Tate, they don't they don't care where their seat is anyway they'll go out and play and that's they have to play Bethel Tate now they, they got to beat them all anyway it doesn't yeah. matter if you start at the bottom or start at the top right, right. so and I think that's Chip Otten and the, and the Cavaliers mentality is just get us to the playoffs and then we'll beat everybody else and try to get the championship and Bethel Tate stands in the way and and uh, I know it's a different region for Coldwater this year, so you're going to see some teams you haven't necessarily seen, but they haven't seen you, they don't understand. If they're not from this area or from the MAC, they don't understand what Coldwater and Minster and Marion Local are all about. The Bethel Tate's in for a long night. Chip Otten got his 100th win as the Cavs head coach in their Week 10 victory. Didn't take many years, did it? No, not, very, <laughs> not too many. It helps when you play 15 games a season, which yeah. Coldwater, could, if they make it to the state finals, it'll be the seventh year in a row that they have played the maximum 15 games in a season. Tough on the basketball coach. Now. Yeah, you got to schedule. <laughs> you got to wait a little bit to get the basketball wait a schedule yeah. gone. So we expect the Cavs to, to make another run, and they haven't given us any reason to think otherwise with what yeah. they've done. Jack Hemelgarn at quarterback, you know, mm -hmm. Craig Shane here, Chris Post, their defense is outstanding. So we're looking mm -hmm. at the Cavs in D5 as the favorites. In Division 6 now, Tenora is the two seed in Region 20, and Van Buren and Ayersville also getting in in this region. Yep. Van Buren's 7-3 and three finished. They're number 5. Ayersville's number 6. So Tenora and Ayersville actually played each other in Week uh -huh. 10 for the GMC title, yep. and Tenora handled Ayersville pretty easily. Tenora's tournament tested. You know, they're very good. Uh, they, they went a long way last year. I think lost in the semis. State semis. A very close game. Yes. Um, so they're good, and they're used to getting into the tournament and going a long way. But, you know, Van Buren is, is the Cinderella story. You know, they were 0-3. We did them up at Bluffton, and they were not playing well. And now they're playing really well. It's good to see. Good yeah, to see for great Coach Shap. What a second. turnaround. Those seniors and those, those coaches, they wouldn't let it go away. Good, good for them. Second straight postseason appearance for Van Buren. They'll travel to Gibsonburg. And then 9-1 and one, Marion Local. They're the one seed mm. in Region 22. Jefferson and Spencerville, 3-6 rematch. Mm. How about that? Well, you know, it's great for the media. It's great for the fans. I'm not sure the coaches will want to turn right around and play. You know, that, that's hard on the team that won because the other team's got all that revenge going. Now, Jefferson does have the home field advantage, so that helps a little bit. Uh, that's just going to be a knockout, drag out. If I said that right, kind of guess. Yes. You know, I think you got very it right. physical. Yeah. The weather should be good. Uh, that'll be fun. That'll be a lot of fun. Let's take a look back at a couple of plays from the Week 10 yeah. matchup between the two teams because this decided the NWC title. Jefferson got it over Spencerville, handing their 
their first loss of the season, and Jefferson came out firing, and I mean literally right out of the <laughs> gate, first play of the game, yeah. and the Jeff Cats able to capitalize. Well, what a surprise. You know, Jay Stockwell, he can throw it. I, you know, they, they just choose not to throw it a lot, but he can, and uh, the play-action pass is so oh, important uh, out for that great okay. run game. And here you see a little play-action alignment out in front, and his, his receiver got behind the defenders from Spencerville, and... Jason lofted it out there to Grant Wallace, and that's the way the game started. You can actually see the game clock behind, uh, you know, just starting to tick. But he is five or six yards behind the, the best uh, or the closest defender. And it, it surprised Spencerville, I'm sure. It surprised all the fans. And that's a, that's a quick strike right there. Now we're going to take another look. Uh, and you say, wait a minute, two touchdown passes, all they do is run it. Well. Uh, the great ones have to be able to throw it a little bit too. I remember Spencerville early on was three for four with three touchdowns to win a ball game. And this is Hunter Binkley, the great running back, getting it to him on a screen. Again, a little play action pass. Binkley sets up inside, comes out, got the lineman down there looking to block. And now you give it to your best ball carrier in the open field. And there's three white shirts kind of falling over each other, but they took care of the black shirts. There's a receiver working downfield and Binkley into the end zone. And that's the way they went up 14-0 on two passes for a run-oriented offensive football team. And their defense did the rest. Spencerville, we know the offense they generated and what they averaged per game on the ground. Well, they didn't give up any touchdowns to the Spencerville mm -hmm. offense. The lone Spencerville touchdown came on a nice kick return by Calvin Wilson. Mm -hmm. Jefferson also added two rushing scores. But we had Coach Zerby in here. We had Coach Summers in here. They'll both look to make adjustments. It's very mm -hmm. difficult to beat the same team in two weeks in a row, so yeah, I'm looking forward is. to that rematch. It is. That's why it's going to be a great football game. Those are two good coaches. They have great respect for each other, and the kids respect the, the players from each team, so that's what a rivalry is all about. And then quickly touching on Marion Local, they'll face mm -hmm. Miami East at home, seeking their fifth straight state title. It starts with a home game against Miami East, and again, like Coldwater, looking at them as the favorites. Yeah, the pressure's off with the win streak. You know, they lost to Coldwater there in the middle of the season, but uh, they're ready for the tournament as well. and, and uh, you know, we hope for all the locals to go. And out of that, that group, we've got three that I think could make a lot of noise. So whoever comes out of that region might just win the state. Yes. And in Division 7, we've got a lot more local teams as well. And we've got to start with Macomb, 9-1. Mm -hmm. They're the top seed in Region 24. Mm -hmm. And I think they're the team to beat here. Nine-game winning streak. I do, too. Yeah, you their only their... loss is a Marion local. Right. And they played them tough week one. They've gotten a lot better since then. We keep hearing how big they are how strong they are, and, and they just score lots of points and, and the best defense in the area points-wise. Um, so, yeah, they, they've got a, a good shot at making some noise. And Lipsick and Arlington, 5-5, five and five, replay, same league, know each other. That'll be another Spencerville-Jefferson kind of game. You know, no secrets. Let's just go play. They just played each other week eight. Mm -hmm. Lipsick got the win at Lipsick. Mm -hmm. So Arlington looking for a little revenge yep. there. Crestview making it in at 4-6 and six as the eight. And you draw Mary, uh, you draw Macomb rather, and that's yeah. that's a tough assignment. Yeah. But good for Crestview though to get in, yeah. and even with that four and the four and six record, they got a chance. Any way you can get in, St. John's did it last year at four and six, and they won a couple. So Crestview can do it too. Five and five, Pandora Gilboa finishes ninth. A young team that could be very good next year. And mm -hmm. now our final region, it is Region 26, and Minster is the top seed. Yep. Four recoveries, the three. Riverside, the four. Eight of the five. Lehman, the seven. Wormy, the eight. This region. Lots of locals. This is all local almost. Yep. Yep. So Minster's eight and two. They're looking for the D7 title after winning Division Six last yep. year. And they'll face Fort Wormy. And this is a rematch from week one. Yeah, completely different scenario, different team. Fort Wormy doesn't even resemble that team with... You know, Whit Parks being his first game, now it's his 11th game. Things will be different. This will be a different ball game, and Minster knows that. I mean, it, Garen Stokes is fully aware of that. And uh, this should be a lot better game than the opener because they really put it on him in the opener. We talked about Van Buren starting slow and then rattling off a bunch of wins. Fort Wormy, Fort did, the Wormy did the same thing, right? Thing, yeah. 0 and 4 back, got to share that title, didn't they? They did. Yeah. NWCC. I mean, giving them up for dead after four or five weeks. Sydney Lehman the same way. And both those teams, they're too strong of programs to give it up that easy. They've come back and both made the playoffs. And Riverside also, they share that NWCC title with Wormy. Mm -hmm. They're in. They're the four seed. They'll play Ada yep. at home. That's an interesting game. It is. You know, because eight out of the Northwest Conference, and, and we've talked all year long how strong the NWC is, and, uh, you know, one versus eight, that's not a typical one versus eight. Or are they? No, that's four a four or five. five. They're yeah. a four or five. That, that a close. lot of times that's yeah. where your best games come from right. anyway is four and five. So. I think we could see that. Yeah. Fort Recovery will face Miami Valley Christian Academy as the Indians 
hosting a playoff game for the first time ever. That's that? it's yeah. so exciting. Oh yeah, last year was the first playoff game. They went down to Lormy and now they get a home game. So things are rolling over there. Pretty interesting. They'll have the party deck rocking over there on the other side of the field. Oh so yes, be a lot of fun. And then Layman rounds out the region, faces Covington, mm -hmm. and Layman the seventh seed. They'll travel there. So a lot of local teams in that yeah. region. Got to like Minster and what they've done, but yeah. we'll see who comes out of it all. Only two losses, defending state champs. And another close miss for us on a local front, USV finishing ninth in this region. And what a great season four. for them, too. Get six and four, winning record out of there, and that close to getting into the playoffs or getting a share of that championship. So good job by Josh Spencer and his Rams. Finishing above 500, six yeah. and four. Well, before we get to our rebroadcast schedule, let's just take a look quickly at Playoff teams by conference. Thought this was interesting because the BVC and the MAC tied for the most with four. Yeah, we're used to the MAC, but yeah. not the BVC. Look but at the they, BVC. Yeah, they snuck in there. GMC three, the NWCC three, NWC three, track three, WBL three. So a great mix spread across all the leagues in the in the area. And we will see as we play it out. We'll be right here to help break it all down for you too as we go the next five weeks ending in Columbus at the Horseshoe. It'll be fun. Can't wait. All right, before we go, let's take a look at our rebroadcast schedule, and it all begins Friday night at 11.30 p.m. Belmont at Wapakoneta, home game for the Redskins. Good week 11 matchup for Travis Moyer and company. Then Saturday, it's a busy day. Starts at 7, Salina at Trotwood, Madison. You'll be able to see that one on WOSN. Immediately followed by Lipsick at Arlington. And then 11.30 p.m., Spencerville at Delphus Jefferson, the rematch. And then Sunday at 9 p.m., we've got OG versus Indian Lake. And I know Mark, you'll be on the call with Mark Shine for that. So we're looking forward to that one. Mark Shine's pretty excited about that steak sandwich. He's gonna enjoy that steak that sandwich. Out, yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> well, thank you very much, Mark. Right. Great job as always. And thank you for joining us here on This Week. Mark's Madness will be back next week.